rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Not that I wish to imply you have been sleeping on the job. No one is more deserving of a rest, and all the effort in the world would have gone to waste until... Well, let's just say your hour has come again. The right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. So wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and smell the ashes. Attention, ground units. Anti-citizen reported in this community. Code, lock, cauterize, stabilize. Are they gone? Good, I think they're gone. Sorry about that. The Combine have kind of been trying to kill me since I made a run for it out of City 17 a few days ago. Now you might be wondering to yourself why I had to make a run for it. See, Half-Life 2 just turned 10 years old and I decided, in honor of the occasion, I was going to give the game a little run-through. Problem is, the Combine aren't big fans of the game, seeing as how it's an entire game built around killing them. But, that wasn't about to stop me, and that is exactly what we are going to do today. We are taking a look back at Half-Life 2. So on its surface, Half-Life 2 looks more or less like a typical first-person shooter. The player progresses through a variety of mostly linear levels, engaging enemies with a variety of different weapons, ranging from the standard, like your pistols, your submachine guns, and your shotguns, to the less standard, like the always awesome gravity gun, which might I add is still the coolest weapon in any video game ever. Along the way, the player would be presented with a handful of mostly physics-based puzzles, a couple of driving segments, and obviously narrative exposition, which was pretty unique for the time given that none of it ever took the player to a cutscene. Every bit of exposition was delivered in gameplay, meaning that the player never once left the control of Gordon Freeman throughout the entire experience. Now, if all of that sounds like pretty standard fare, that's because it is. And it is the standard because of Half-Life 2. When Half-Life 2 first came out, it had the best of everything. It had the best graphics, the best animation, the best sound design, the best story, the best gameplay, the best controls, the best AI, the list goes on and on and on. Everybody wanted to play Half-Life 2, and every game wanted to be Half-Life 2. And if you don't believe me, just look at the reviews the game got. The game received universal praise from everybody. It won countless Game of the Year awards, and has even received Game of the Decade awards from places like the Spike Video Game Awards. When it came out, Half-Life 2 was it. It had everything, it did everything, and everybody loved it. So yeah, we've already established that people loved Half-Life 2. So the question now becomes, why did people love Half-Life 2? What was it about this game that was so special that made it stand out from all the other games coming out at the time? The answer is, there really is no one answer to that question. Everybody you ask will probably tell you a different thing. For some, it's as simple as just loving the gravity gun. For others, they fell in love with the world and the characters and the story. Others thought the game's physics-based puzzle-solving and combat were a lot of fun. 
Still others thought that the Source engine was groundbreaking. Others would point to levels like Ravenholm as an example of the game's excellent pacing and atmosphere. And truth be told, that, that g pretty much gives you the answer you need. Everything about Half-Life 2 could be used as an example for why this game was such a big deal when it came out. You ask someone what's the best part about Half-Life 2, the answer they're going to give you is probably something along the lines of pick one, because any part of it could be the best part of Half-Life 2. And there are very, very few games that get to lay claim to something like that. But surely the game can't be that excellent. Its greatness has to have been exaggerated, right? After all, people always look back on things as being better than they actually were. Truth be told, Half-Life 2 deserves all the praise it gets. But the sentiment is understandable. See, Half-Life 2 can suffer a bit from Seinfeld isn't funny, if you're familiar with the TV Tropes page. In the sense that Half-Life 2 pioneered so many things that have since become standard convention in first-person shooters, to the point that going back and playing Half-Life 2 now, it can feel a little bit formulaic or even cliched at times, because all the things it introduced that were so revolutionary at the time have since become standard fare. Nothing all that special. But really, even that is ultimately still a testament to just how good Half-Life 2 really was. That so much of the game has become standard fare in first-person shooters nowadays just speaks to how good it really was and how important this game really was when it released. Well, I think that about does it for this video. As always, I am Aldman98. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments down below. As always, I, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I think the Combine are gone. So with this out of the way, I'm going to bid you all farewell and enjoy a little bit of Half-Life 2 Episode 1 to continue with the 10th anniversary celebration. Go. Individual, you are charged with capital malcompliance. Anti-citizen status approved. Oh, son of a...